An allegation is an allegation. Until what? Until proven. Thank you. So why am I handcuffs? How many times have you heard a rapper brag in his songs about killing someone or living life on the edge? It's actually a really common thing and has become a major part of lyrics in the rap industry. But it turns out that this clout-seeking and bragging on their songs may actually be way more than that. Not all of them try to hide the things they've done, including committing the serious crime of murder. Shocked? Well, you'll need to take a seat as we show you some of these rappers who are actually killers. Before we dive in, make sure to leave a like on this video. Also, if you'd like to join this month's giveaway of a brand new iPhone 12, then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and watch this video until the end to find and comment the hidden message. Good luck! Number 8. Da Baby. The 29-year-old rapper was born Jonathan Kirk in Cleveland, Ohio, but moved with his family to Charlotte, North Carolina when he was 8 years old. While DaBaby was a pretty regular kid, this changed really fast as he got mixed up with the wrong crowd. The young boy became a little too interested in life on the street and went exploring. Sadly, he became a killer in the fall of 2018. The rapper went for a bit of shopping at Walmart but got into a fight with a 19-year-old, Jalen Craig. Seeing two grown men fighting in the produce aisle of Walmart is quite funny when you think about it, except this ended with a lot of blood. DaBaby shot Jalen, who later died from his injuries. He was able to get out of this as his legal team claimed that it was done in self-defense. Apparently, the younger man was trying to rob the rapper but lost his life instead. However, DaBaby still had to take a year of probation for not having the license to carry a concealed weapon in the first place. Number 7. Tay K In 2014, 14-year-old Taylor McIntree knew that he wanted to be a rapper. He got really fast into it and started his rap group called Daytona Boys right there in his Arlington, Texas hometown. You could tell that Tay K had the ambition and drive to keep it going. The group started getting a whole lot of attention when they did recordings with local rappers like Santana Sage and Pimpy Z. Then the young hip-hop group released some tracks on SoundCloud. Unfortunately, being just kids, they didn't really know much about the production aspect of making music. So the locals listened, but it came off as amateurish. Tay K decided that it was time for a solo career in 2015. In 2017, he released his most infamous track, known as The Race. The craziest thing about this song is that it was based on real-life events. Tay K became a killer, and that was the story of him running away from the authorities. In 2016, the young rapper and some friends wanted to rob an acquaintance of cash and drugs. They got 20-year-old Ariana Barat and 19-year-old Megan Holt to seduce Ethan Walker in his house. When he was distracted enough, the boys got in. Things took a turn for the worst when they had an unexpected visitor, Ethan's friend Zachary. There was a lot of scuffle, shots were fired and Ethan was killed. Tay K was put on house arrest after this incident while he waited for his hearing. But the young man just decided he was having none of that cut off his ankle monitor and made it to New Jersey before he was caught. Of course, he announced it to the whole world with a lovely middle finger at the police via Twitter before bolting off from his house. Number 6. Y&W Melly No doubt about it, Y&W Melly is one of the most controversial rappers around. Before he had even gotten to the legal drinking age, the rapper had already been in a lot of trouble. Being raised by a young single mother struggling to provide for him, the teen had more than enough time to mix in with the wrong crowd on the streets. Not surprisingly, he joined the Bloods in his early teens and went quite deep into the gang life. We've seen it play out over and over again how joining a gang never ends well. Before long, he started messing around with guns and drugs. He got into real trouble when he was arrested for shooting a gun at a bunch of people when he was just 16. This happened close to Vero Beach High School. Melly got a year in jail as he was charged with aggravated assault and discharging a firearm in public. Luckily, no one died. But that was only a prelude to something bigger, and that happened in October 2018. YNW Juvie and YNW Sack Chaser died after being rushed to the hospital with multiple gunshot wounds. According to YNW Melly, this was a drive by shooting, except it actually wasn't. He and YNW Bortland were arrested in February 2019 for the killings, as investigations revealed that they shot the two right inside the car. Number 5. French Montana. When French Montana started his rap career in the early 2000s, he got hit with a murder case that nearly ruined his rise in the rap industry. The rapper went to a recording studio in the Bronx with some people he thought he was friends with. However, French Montana wasn't exactly a good judge of character as these men were plotting to finish him off after the session. Montana was ambushed as he walked out of the building. It got pretty messy as he tried fighting back. There was a scuffle, a lot of shots were fired, and inevitably people got hit. While French Montana got a hole in the head that sent him to the hospital in critical condition and left a lifelong scar, one of the other men wasn't so lucky. He died, and French Montana came home to a warrant for his arrest. Then, just like Tay K, Frenchie decided to do the race. What is it with rappers and running away when they're obviously going to get caught? Montana left New York, 
but it was only a matter of time before he was extradited and made to face a murder case. He was able to beat this, as they couldn't prove that he had fired the shot at the man. Instead, they said that the men had accidentally shot each other during the scuffle. With that, French Montana was free to continue his rap career and show off his scar on television. Number 4. Gucci Mane Back in 2005, the rap community was shocked when the body of local rapper Pookie Loke was discovered by detectives near a middle school in Atlanta, Georgia. What even shocked people more was the person responsible for this, Gucci Mane. The rapper admitted that he was guilty, but insisted that it was done in self-defense. Apparently, Gucci's chain had a $10,000 bounty, and four men decided they wanted to cash that in. However, they got way more than they bargained for when they attacked Gucci as he was visiting a female. A fight broke out, and as it is with scenarios like this, they didn't expect that Gucci would be strapped. He didn't get hit, but Pookie Loke had no luck. He bled out behind the school, and Gucci buried him in a shallow grave in the woods close to the school. This gave birth to the legend of the boogeyman of rap. The good thing was that Gucci had a lot of eyewitnesses to back up his story, and the court let him go. Still, he believed that rapper Young Jeezy had planned the hit and kept talking about it in interviews. Gucci even dissed him in truth, where his lyrics asked the rapper to dig up his partner. Number 3. A.R.A.B. Two rappers, A.R.A.B. and Cassidy, got hit with murder charges after killing Desmond Hawkins. Cassidy had issues with people who were always pushing him around. However, they couldn't do so much as A.R.A.B. was always around as his enforcer. Basically, A.B. was the muscle in the relationship. Things turned ugly when A.B. had an altercation with Hawkins and his crew earlier in the day. These men then went over to Cassidy's home in Philadelphia to search for A.B. in retaliation. While Cassidy could have turned them away when they knocked on his door, he told Hawkins and his crew that A.B. was out back. That pretty much sealed the shootout that happened just a few minutes later. He supplied A.B. with weapons, and the rapper got busy shooting at the gang. When everything finally died down, A.R.A.B. and Cassidy were unhurt, but Hawkins was down while two other men were injured. Cassidy and A.B. went to trial for this ugly incident. It took two years, but A.B. beat the case, as he claimed that it was done in self-defense. Cassidy, on the other hand, was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter and got a conviction in 2014. Number 2. King Vaughn King Vaughn's story is probably one of the silliest you'll ever read as a reason to take a life. Born in 1994, the rapper grew up in one of the most dangerous streets in the city of Chicago. It was home to gang violence, both with black disciple and gangster disciple. However, while Chief Keefe and Michelle Obama were able to break free from this neighborhood, King Vaughn took the alternate route. He joined the Black Disciple for protection, but became identified with a dangerous and violent group. It was only a matter of time before he got wrapped up in crimes like drugs, illegal gambling, kidnapping, and ultimately murder. In 2014, King Vaughn was at a house party when he saw a man called Malcolm looking at him for a long time. The rapper decided that he didn't like how this guy was eyeballing him, so he wanted to set him straight. King Vaughn left the party a few hours later with a friend and returned with his car packed in a nearby alley instead of the driveway. They headed over to the porch where Malcolm was and started firing loaded guns towards the three people sitting there. Malcolm Stuckey made a run for it, but eventually he was hit and died while the other victims survived. A few days later, both King Vaughn and his friend were charged with first-degree murder and attempted murder. Number 1. Dresta This rapper was one of the famous ones of the 90s. He was discovered by Eazy e and then released an album in 1995 with BG Knockout. Unfortunately, his career took a nosedive when he got into a shootout in Watts in 1992. During this incident, he killed a man, but was also really wounded. After recovering from his gunshot wounds, Dresta had to face his charges, which were definitely murder. He pleaded no contest to voluntary manslaughter. This got him only a year of probation. Now that's a lawyer we would love to meet. And that brings us to the end of today's list. Which of these rappers did you least expect to be able to follow through with killing someone? Are there any others that you would add to this list? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you're a big fan of rap music. And if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button for all future content. Thanks for watching. Until next time.